Today on Rappler, Typhoon Pablo, international name Bofa, wipes out entire towns, leaving more than 400 people dead, hundreds missing, and a quarter of a million homeless. Lawmakers supporting the Reproductive Health Bill predict it will pass Congress next week. And 13 officials of the Development Bank of the Philippines are fired over 660 million peso behest loans to a company of Roberto Ongpin. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Entire towns are wiped out by Typhoon Pablo, with an estimated quarter of a million people left homeless without access to water and food. Strong winds and flash floods flatten at least three towns in Davao Oriental, Banganga, Boston, and Catil. Around two-thirds of the dead are found on the east coast of Mindanao, while the rest were recovered in and around Nubataan and Moncayo in Compostela Valley. Many are killed when cut logs, toppled trees, and debris from the mountains comes crashing through homeless and farmland. Officials say many victims in Nubataan and Moncayo, both landslide-prone towns, work at unregulated mines in the Gold Rush area or in large banana plantations. In General Santos City, at least 300 fishermen and seamen are believed to be missing. The death toll from Typhoon Pablo continues to rise, with at least 327 people dead. As of 1 p.m. Thursday, the National Risk Reduction and Management Council also reports 401 people injured and 378 missing. Other estimates of the death toll reach as high as 477. More than 229,000 people across seven regions were affected by the typhoon. Surigao del Sur, Davao Oriental, and Compostela Valley are all under a state of calamity. Despite the tragedy, there are stories of hope. On Thursday, aid workers rescue a pregnant woman and her one-year-old son from floodwaters in Nubataan. They also saved Carlos Agang, a farmer who was trapped in the mud for two days after raging waters wiped out his mountainside home. Agang's family is still missing. Survivors continue to stream into evacuation centers. Pablo weakens as it moves west-northwest. It is expected to be outside the Philippine area of responsibility by Friday. All storm warning signals have been lowered. Compostela Valley Governor Arturo Uy says he did not foresee Pablo's fury. Critics say provincial officials underestimated Pab Pablo's strength and did not take enough measures to protect the people. Compostela Valley is one of the area's hardest hit, with 184 people dead as of Thursday. In the town of Nubataan alone, 85 are killed. A landslide hits the town's evacuation center, which accounts for the high death toll. Uy says the volume of water was unexpected and he wants the cause of the flooding investigated. But Mines and Geosciences Bureau Director Leo Hasareno says some areas in Nubataan should not have been inhabited because these are disaster-prone areas. As the death toll rises, the local government and rescue workers face another problem, finding funeral parlors. Aside from the mud and debris, the stench of dead bodies make rescue operations more difficult. Mahar Lagmai, Executive Director of the Government's Disaster Response System, NOAA, says flood simulations for Compostela Valley on Wednesday showed Nubataan is flood-prone. Lagmai says residents were advised to leave mountainous areas, but they did not know where to go. President Benigno Aquino is set to visit Compostela Valley in Boston, Davao Oriental, on Friday. The House of Representatives fails to vote on the Reproductive Health Bill this week despite the support of President Aquino. But RH Bill lawmakers say they predict the historic passage of the bill in Congress next week. Carmela Fonbuena reports. The House of Representatives has turned into a battle zone. We have the numbers, then we will win. For five Congresses, different versions of the Reproductive Health Bill were filed in the Philippine Congress. It's a long, drawn-out advocacy to provide reproductive health services, including free contraceptives to the poor who can't afford them.
even to Catholics, Mr. Speaker. In a country where the Catholic Church is very powerful, leaders play safe and choose not to antagonize the bishops. But President Benigno Aquino III is surpassing expectations. If in the past he wavered on his support for the RH bill, he now gives it his full backing. In a lunch meeting in Malacanang, he told the representatives he wants a vote as soon as possible. But it's not an easy request. I'm sure that the president will understand the, 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 what we are undergoing. Okay, uh, a difference of one week siguro will not, uh, at the end of the day, really make a lot of difference. Critics of the RH bill are putting up a good fight, exhausting all parliamentary tactics to try to insert killer amendments to the bill. I'm in terrible pain, Mr. Speaker. But they are losing the numbers game. We have tested the sentiments of the members and the sentiment would be in favor of the bill. Yes, I'm confident, pero sabihin niyo kanto, cautiously confident. The historic vote is expected to happen next week. If it passes, the fight shifts to the Senate. Pro-RH senators say they too have the numbers to pass the bill. Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler, Manila. Thirteen officials of the Development Bank of the Philippines are fired for granting 660 million pesos in behest loans to a firm controlled by former Trade Secretary Roberto Ongpin. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales says the loans made in 2009 are illegal. The bank officials are involved in two separate loans to Delta Ventures Resources Incorporated, which a Senate committee probed in 2011 to early 2012. The Ombudsman says the Ongpin Group used the DBP loans to make fat profits from the trading of Felix Mining Corporation shares, while DBP did not. The Philippines wants to keep fishing tuna in an area near Papua New Guinea. Environmental organization Greenpeace wants a total ban on tuna fishing. Daniel Rudden reports. This is the Greenpeace ship MV Esperanza and it is now docked in Manila. Greenpeace is a participant in the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission, attended by delegates from 30 countries. The meeting wants to find a solution to tuna overfishing in the Pacific. Greenpeace is calling for an extension of a total ban on tuna fishing. And that's to protect not only the, the ocean and the fisheries themselves, the fish stocks themselves, but also to make sure that the fishing industry has a future, including the, the Philippine fishing industry. The WCPFC banned tuna fishing in certain pockets of the Pacific Ocean to protect the population of yellowfin and big eye tuna. The Philippines was granted a special four month access to high seas pocket one an area bounded by Papua New Guinea, Micronesia, and Indonesia. The exemption aims to keep Filipino fishing vessels out of local waters to replenish the badly depleted stock of local tuna. During the total ban in 2010, Filipino fishermen resorted to catching juvenile tuna within Philippine waters. The Philippines wants to keep its access to Pocket 1. If you allow us, if you, they don't allow us to go to the high seas, we will continue to become an irresponsible fishing nation because we're catching juveniles. But Greenpeace doubts Philippine vessels will abide by the terms of the exemption. Last month, Greenpeace caught the Filipino vessel Sail 19 and two other Indonesian vessels illegally transferring frozen tuna to a Cambodian vessel. Transshipment of fish from one vessel to another is prohibited in international waters. Mid-sea fish transfers has proven to aid illegal fishing. Greenpeace believes the fishing exemption will only set the stage for more illegal transfers. We've seen non-compliance by that fleet that's now back in the, in the high seas operating there. So we want to see these areas closed, not just to the Philippines, but to all fleets. Pew Environment Group says there are gaps in the enforcement by the international fishing regulation body. There is no comprehensive inspection scheme. No requirement for vessels to provide information before entering port, and no prohibition of port entry to illegal vessels. It seems the International Commission doesn't have the muscle to enforce any fishing ban in the Pacific, partial or total. And as countries trade off short-term gains for long-term sustainability, tuna stocks dwindle in the Pacific. Daniel Rudin, Rappler, Manila. 
Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, the Philippines is a battleground in the front lines in the fight against climate change. A UN report says its 7,100 islands rank third in the world in terms of vulnerability and climate risk. After destructive typhoons and unexpected weather disturbances, Filipinos are coming together with systems to cope. Senior negotiator Bernarditas Muller tells the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Doha that she, quote, cannot sit here and allow only those interests of developed countries to prevail. At number four, U.S. officials tell NBC News the Syrian military is ready to use chemical weapons against its own citizens. Precursor chemicals for sarin, a deadly nerve gas, have allegedly been loaded into aerial bombs ready to be dropped on rebel strongholds. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton issues a statement warning Syrian President Bashar al-Assad not to use chemical weapons, adding he would be crossing, quote, a red line if he did so. At number five. It's Islamists versus secular protesters in Cairo as violence breaks out around the presidential palace Wednesday night. Three senior advisors to Mohamed Morsi resigned during the clashes, blaming the president for the bloodshed. Morsi's prime minister appeals to both sides to dialogue. Periodic gunshots were heard while both camps brandished makeshift clubs and knives. The violence casts doubt on about the ability of Morsi's referendum on December 15th to calm the groups. Morsi's secular critics accuse him of seeking to establish a new dictatorship. And at number 10, the battle for your photos kicks into high gear. Shortly after Facebook acquired Instagram, relations with Twitter began to sour. On Wednesday, Instagram disables part of its users' ability to display their photos on Twitter. If you want to see the picture, you'll be redirected to Instagram's site. Instagram CEO says, quote, We've decided that right now, what makes sense is to direct our users to the Instagram website. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Catholics around the world will have a new way to bring themselves closer to their faith. The Vatican will soon release a new mobile application allowing users to view stories related to activities in the Vatican and video of papal events. The Pope app will send out alerts and news links from Vatican news outlets, as well as video of papal events, streams from Vatican webcams, and archived media featuring Pope Benedict XVI. It will be ready for iPhones and iPads on December 10th, with an Android version coming in January 2013. Scientists on Wednesday unveiled the newest composite image of the Earth at night. They call it the black marble, a new and unprecedented view from space of our home planet. The image shows the contrast between the Earth's built and natural environments. Cities, towns, and other human-built phenomena glow, while most of the underdeveloped world and the planet's undeveloped areas are dark. The images that make up the composite photo were taken using a new NASA NOAA satellite with a sensor that can detect even the faintest light of a ship at sea. NASA says the data from the images provide researchers with a variety of studies and events, such as Hurricane Sandy back in November and fog forecasting in San Francisco. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote will come down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories which have gotten the most clicks, most votes on the mood meter. If we take a look today, a major two stories still continue to, to dominate. Pa Typhoon Pablo, at least 274, it's now nearly 400 at 94 percent sad. Typhoon Pablo leaves at least 325 dead, 85 percent sad. And we see the RH bill. Senate rejects Enrile Recto RH changes, pro RH Solons maintain majority vote, 85% happy, and the story with the most votes on the mood meter. Pro RH Solon shows strength despite stalled deliberations, 81% happy, contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, December 6, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, Tomorrow begins today.